When can I retire? That's a question that many baby boomers are asking themselves. It's also the title of a book by Andrew Allen Tuck, When Can I Retire? And probably the question that Andrew receives the most in his weekly column, Family Finance, in the Financial Post. Welcome, Andrew. Good afternoon. It's a good to be here, John. So when can most baby boomers retire? It really depends if you're in a big defined benefit plan or not, right? Well, the, the, the shorter answer is that you can retire when you can afford it. If you retire before you can afford it, you'll probably live in, in debt and misery and wish you hadn't. Now, uh, I read, reread the book the other day, and uh, it seemed to me that you personally are inclined to this feeling that if you, can't, if, you don't, if you have to ask the question, you probably shouldn't be retiring. And there's a lot of good stuff about continuing to work. Well, in family finance, we get a lot of questions about whether people are, are ready for retirement. Do they have enough money? And for that, they have to look at their cash flows based on what they have from their company pension plans, RRSPs, government pensions, OAS, CPP or QPP, and see if there's enough cash to maintain their way of life. If, if there isn't, then something has to give. Either the way of life has to be trimmed or people have to continue to work. It's always an individual question. Now, of course, your book was written, I mean, it came out around early 2009, but when you were writing it, it was before the crash. Uh, I'm not sure how much the crash uh, would have influenced your, uh, I mean, uh, you probably uh, hear a lot in your column every week about people who have delayed retirement two or three years because of the, uh, the 2008 crash. John, the crash devastated a lot of people's retirement plans. People who had, let's say, a, a million dollars in their RRSPs found suddenly they had six hundred and fifty or seven hundred thousand dollars, depending on how they, their assets were allocated. If they had a lot of bonds, they didn't suffer as much as if they had nothing but mining stocks and growth stocks and things dependent on the China story. It was a, a desperate situation, and it made people realize that they had to look at their retirement plans a lot more carefully with a with a pencil and a magnifying glass. Now you you talk a lot in the book about the re retire the replacement ratio, and you talk about you know on the one hand fidelity investments thinks eighty to one hundred percent is what you need to replace of what you were earning when you were working, and the other the other extreme is Malcolm Hamilton on the fifty percent. Where are you there? Pretty well in a balance between that. Well, I, I'm aware of, the, of of these two polar positions. Now, when when uh, mutual fund companies say that you need to have much more uh, private investment to retire, of course they speak of it with so, a certain amount of self interest. Fork tongue, yes. <laughs> that's right. They propose that if you give them your money, then after the fees, you'll you'll wind up with more, and that's a gamble because, as we know, while the fees are are fairly certain, the outcome of most of these plans is not certain. Um, as to Malcolm Hamilton, a man whom I respect enormously, his view is that you will not have a lot of fixed expenses for, for retirement savings, your tax rate may go down, the kids have been put through post-secondary education and your debts are paid so you may be able to spend less. I take a middle position. If you retire young, let's say you're in your 55, you know, 55 and out, something like that. You may have time for a lot of sports. You may spend, you may have more time to spend money on your holidays and on your travels. If you retire when you're 75 or you are 75 or 80, you may have very little leisure time and very little ability to spend all that money. So it's, whether it's 50% or 100% or something in between, it's a stage of life question. Now, you personally are in your 60s. Yes. I, I guess I could ask, when does Andrew Allen Tuck get to retire? I get the impression he doesn't want to. Well, no, because I wouldn't have anything to do. I want a reason to, to get up in the morning. And, you know, there are two positions. Uh, one guy said, well, how do you spell retirement? And the answer is B-O-R-I-N-G. That's my position. Um, Einstein, when he was told he'd have to go to the Institute for Advanced Studies in, uh, in Princeton, New Jersey, after leaving uh, Germany with his life intact in, the, uh, in 1938, um, said it was like uh, being banished to paradise. He figured he would retire from a sort of active teaching to research, and that was his comment. Other people think of, of retirement as something like death with, uh, with benefits. So it's an individual question. Well, we're going to talk uh, next session about uh, the mathematics and all the programs and to address the question of whether the average Canadian can or even should retire. Thank you very much, Andrew. Alan Tuck, author of When Can I Retire?